Hello, it's Robert Miner with Dynamic Traders Group with this week's DT Trade Strategies for the week beginning March 15th. This is a short video that we do for our YouTube and Twitter followers. Uh, give you a little idea of what we look at in our regular DT reports and hopefully each week we alert you to at least a potential trade setup or a position in the market, something that you can use uh, in your day-to-day -day practical trade strategies. Keep in mind, even if you don't trade, the market that we look at or the time frame we look at in these videos, what you learn, and these are primarily to be educational for you, but what you learn, you can apply to other markets in any time frame. So it's real important that you view these as education and then you go and apply it to other markets and other time frames. Um, I know my voice is a little off today. I've had a cold. Uh, it's still hanging in there a bit, but I hope, hopefully you'll be able to understand me. Um, so before we get going, this is, uh, I'm part of this, uh, once again this year, part of this Robbins Forex trading contest. I do the Forex and Futures contests um, most years. Uh, so far, this is the results just through last week. Um, pretty good result here so far in the last 10 weeks, up 133%. So this is real money, real time. And I show you this, um, and not to uh, uh, warrant the, these are the kind of results you typically have, but just to show you that I do actually trade. So everything I teach you is very practical oriented. And while Speaking of Forex, this week we're going to take a look at the Euro. Uh, it's just bars on a chart. So whatever we look at is learn from it and apply it, whether you trade stocks or futures or whatever markets that you trade. Boy, look at Carlo here. I don't know who Carlo is, but he is screaming. <laughs> Uh, 10 weeks into this year, he's already up 462% in this account. Well, let's see if all of us that are up in these top few can hang on to these results as the year goes on. So anyway, uh, let's get started. Let's take a close look at the current position of the euro. So this is the Euro monthly data. Let's take a little bit of a long-term perspective here. A lot of you may be interested in the longer-term trends, even though we usually, trading-wise, we're just trading those daily trends, which are three- to five-day setups, or the weekly setups, three- to five-week setups. But here's the monthly data going back to 2008. Um, just to get some perspective is that more than likely this top that we made just a few weeks ago in January is not a particularly significant high. We probably have a long ways to go on the upside before we complete what I'm looking at as a major ABC correction coming up from the January 2017 low. So that's pretty significant. Um, in that we probably have not just many weeks, but many months to go eventually on the upside before we complete uh, the advance off of the February 2000 low, February, March low, depending on what data we're looking at. So keep that in mind if you have any sort of long-term needs uh, to understand longer-term trends in the euro or the dollar. Euro probably has much longer in time and price to go on the upside, and the dollar probably eventually much longer in time and price to go on the downside. And of course, you know, these currencies affect all the other markets or, or frequently do. So that's a good piece of information to have. Now we're in the weekly data. And the significance of this weekly data, this is coming up from the March uh, low, uh, the, the major wave below, is that, boy, this is a perfect five wave advance, textbook stuff. And if that's the case, once we finish a correction, we've probably got another major advance to go. So it would behoove us <laughs> to um, be on alert for when a correction may be complete. So where are we at as of this past week? Well, potential A, B, C. Uh, uh, a, B, C is zigzag, we call those, are um, uh, most, the most typical types of corrections that are made in markets. Um, however, this is probably not a completed A, B, C correction as of this last week. Why is that? 
Well, there's a couple reasons. Number one, typically a correction against a five-wave trend reaches around the 50% retracement. A lot of times it goes way beyond that, but that's kind of a minimum expectation. And we're just way short of that, way short of it. Um, so more than likely, uh, any low that we have around now is just going to be temporary, and we've got uh, quite a ways to go on the downside before we complete this correction. And just a, a typical Elliott Wave guideline is a correction against a five-wave advance often reaches around the wave four of lesser degree extreme. So that would be the November 2020 low. And again, we're way short of that. So this is just price-wise, uh, way short of what a typical correction against this five-wave advance will be. So it's probably going to end up being something other than a simple ABC. It's probably going to be some sort of more complex correction. Could be ABC, uh, D, and E. Could ABC, X, and then another ABC. That's all speculation. The point is... It probably is not through. We've probably got quite a ways to go. The other reason is a correction against a five-wave trend usually continues at least to the 38.2% time retracement. Now, we do time and price retracements similar, but there's different ratios for different wave patterns. Uh, so that's beyond the, the, way beyond the subject of this tutorial. Uh, but anyway, we've probably got a much longer to go. Now, that's just a typically the minimum would be the end of April. So again, we've probably got a long time to go, quite a bit of time anyway, and time and price before this correction is complete. However, we're in a position to complete a weekly low. So a weekly low is a low that lasts at least two to three weeks. We have a uh, a trend against that a weekly low for two or three weeks and sometimes more than that but that's a kind of a minimum expectation is two to three weeks and so any advance that we have if we begin to make one very soon uh, should not be the beginning of another bull trend to a new high it should just be part of this corrective decline off the October uh, January low more than likely will not exceed what I've got labeled as this wave B high. So again, it's kind of like this correction it was about three weeks long, it was a little over three weeks, um, and uh, but it was that was just a, a three-week correction against this initial decline. So again, we could have a two to three week or so uh, corrective advance, but more than likely it won't exceed the wave B high, and that will be before we continue. Uh, probably into late April and probably around the November low or lower before we complete the higher time frame correction. Well, here's our daily data. And if we look at the uh, Elliott Wave position coming off this February high, uh, pretty good uh, count for a 1, 2, 3, and the end of last week making a Wave 4 correction. Now, I've got a question mark on it. It's uh, uh, hasn't been confirmed by any means, but it would imply that we've got a pretty good chance of making a new low next week before we complete that weekly low. So what we know is we're in a position to make a weekly low. Uh, it doesn't mean the weekly low is complete, but we're in a position to do that. So we go down to the smaller time frame uh, to uh, give us the initial signal that that low indeed is complete. So when's that signal going to be? Well, we can we can set up the criteria now that when when that criteria is met, then we can develop a specific trade strategy. And that'll be in the next few days, probably near the end of next week, and the next momentum cycle. Momentum cycles are oftentimes even smoother and more reliable than price cycles. Um, so the next momentum uh, cycle and bull reversal again probably won't be till the near the end of next week uh, would be the setup to have completed the weekly low now it may be at a new low may not be at a new low but it will be what we call a high probability low capital exposure setup to cons to then develop a specific trade entry and stop strategy so that's what we'll be looking for and that's what you ought to be prepared for is uh, Probably by the end of next week, daily momentum bull reversal be a setup to complete a weekly low. And um, remember, we're not forecasting, we're identifying setups. 
with high probability outcomes and low capital exposure. And that's the whole objective of trading. So if by chance uh, we get stopped out, it's a very small loss and we're in a position then to identify the next trade setup. So that's what we're looking at. Um, for the euro in the days ahead if you're interested in trading the euro or the dollar or gold or the S&P or whatever and by the way I hope you uh, listened to the S&P video last week and took advantage of that information because it was ended up being pretty good information to identify the probable position of the S&P and specific trade strategies so um, every week I'm hopefully I'm educating you a bit and you can apply it to whatever markets and time frames that you trade. And if you like what I got to say, check out our DT reports. Uh, get a trial from just $19 for a month. That's it for today. Take care. Have a fantastic week. Be back with you next week.